how to replicate Business Central data to a SQL Server using BCCL. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a massive replication of a bunch of tables from Business Central to a SQL Server just using BCCL. Uh, let's get right into that. And um, here is one half of BCCL. So BCCL has uh, those two parts. One is running inside Business Central. The other one is running on the command line or anywhere you want it, on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, uh, inside scripts by itself, up to you. But usually you, usually, uh, you operate all BCCL from outside, but there's a few things that you can do inside Business Central. One of them is the SQL Sync Bundle Builder. This one will create all the configuration and setup that is needed to do sync uh, on a massive scale. Um, and we have to answer a few questions for this. Uh, the first question we need to answer is, what is our sync interval? Um, and I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm gonna say two days, because I'm, I know I'm gonna run this once a day, but then I'll have it pick up whatever was created from the last two days in order to make sure that everything is is grabbed every time it's it's looking for the changes over the last two days every day then if we have tables with dimensions in it uh, like the general data entry or stuff like tables like that uh, we just have a dimension set id field which is kind of annoying um, but we can ask bc cells when when we do this to convert these to uh, columns instead so tell what uh, dimensions you want as columns, and BCCL will transform the dimension set ID into those columns. The last thing we need to tell, uh, tell BCCL here are what tables do we want to synchronize. And I want to synchronize GL account, I want to synchronize GL entry, customer, customer entry, vendor, vendor entry, item, and item ledger entries. I've been working with this product too long. I know all those numbers by heart. So this is this is the list of tables I wanna I wanna sync. Um, so I click OK. What is downloaded up here is a zip file, and sometimes you have to convince Microsoft that this zip file that came out of Microsoft is okay. Um, inside this zip file is all the settings that it needed. Uh, I'll just unzip this to my. Um, to my BCCL folder where I already have BCCL installed, and then we will go there and take a look at what we got. So the first thing we got is a file called SQL Create Tables. So here is a massive, depending on how many tables you took here, here is a bunch of a thousand lines of SQL uh, statement. And I, oops, I'll not I'm type an A, I wanna copy all this. So this is the SQL statement that will create all those tables with all the fields. All but, so right now this tool will ignore uh, all the media image uh, fields because typically they are, you know, they are gonna cause problems. Um, and here's my SQL server. And as you can see right now, I have two tables. They're both called test table for whatever reason it is. So I'll just paste this big thing in I'll run this thing. We got all completed. So let me refresh my table list. And now we can see that I have a customer table, a customer ledger entry, GL entry, item, and vendor. I got everything here. Um, so that is ready to go. Um, so what we can do now is that instead of looking at the SQL part, we go out here and then we look at the other things that were in the zip file. So there were a bunch of mapping files and these mapping files, I'll just grab one of them. Let's say customer mapping. You can see that's just a bunch of JSON, but in reality, it tells you that field number one, which is customer number is mapped to a, a field called number and so on. So it wrote all these things for you. There's a mapping Builder that will create this for you also inside. You just need to do one mapping of something. Um, but it created mapping files for all of them. So the last thing that was created was two uh, batch files. And let me just show that. The one, the, the first one is called first run BCCL. 
uh, and you can see that this is basically a, a bunch of PCCL commands. And uh, we need to edit this just a bit because we need to tell where our SQL Server is. And you can see here there's a placeholder for something with SQL Server connection string. And I just pasted that into my uh, clipboard. So I'm just connecting to the SQL Server you saw here. We can go a new query and do select star from customer. We can run that. And right now we have no customers in it. So we, we got a SQL Server here. That's, that's great. My Business Central right now is just running one that's running on my uh, on my local machine. So I just need to tell how I connect to that. If you're running to the cloud, you need to use OAuth. So there's a BCCL command to take you through the, um, the authentication process. But in this case, I'm just going to type in a demo credentials. Um, so with that, I am ready to run. So if we go out here and then I do first run PCCL. Actually, before I start that, let me just notepad the other one. So I have that open in notepad. And now I'm gonna run the first one. So the first thing happened was a remember command. So remember, this is the business central we're working with. We're using this user and that password. We're working with format number five, which is SQL, and this is our SQL connection. So we can see that table 15, we inserted two, 262 records into, uh, into the, uh, the general, uh, the, the GL account table. And now it's working on table 17, which is, GL entry. So while that is working, we just keep it open, it's kind of behind us here so we can see what's happening. Then let's take a look at the other batch file. So this one, we need to do the same thing. So we need to update the SQL string here. And I want to specify that the user is demo and the password was also something with demo. But the difference between this one and the other one is that these commands, we, we want to only replicate a subset of records. In this case, we're actually creating a filter using the system modified at field and saying that, hey, this field has to be from today minus two days. So remember the two we put into uh, into the setup. Uh, that's, a, that's a special syntax here where you can go in and, and let BCCL kind of figure out what the the um, what the filter should be. You can also just you know, do your own thing and write your own filters and say, we well, want to do this within the last three hours or whatever uh, you want. So get the data from table 15 that is newer than two days. I'll put it into a, a SQL uh, table called GL account using this mapping file. And we can see that while I was chatting, this one is done. So we got two, 262, three and a half thousand GL entries, eight customers, 419 customer ledger entries, seven vendors, 400 vendor ledger entries, 55 items and 655 um, item ledger entries. So if we do the run the other one, so the one we just looked at, then I think I have changed just one deal account and one uh, customer. So we got one updated deal account and one updated customer, otherwise zero, zero, zero. But if I go into my business central now, uh, if I go to sales orders and uh, I take a completely random sales order here, uh, see if this one will post. Ship an invoice. No, it has a tax group. Must have a valid. No, how we deal with this? Go away. We don't need tax where we are posting. Oh. Let's grab another one. That's a real demo here, apparently. Let's see if this one will post. So 
So now we post an invoice. Let's run BCCL sync again. We remember that. So there's still one account, uh, but now we can see five inserted GL ledger entries, uh, one custom ledger entry inserted, uh, nothing on the vendor side and one inserted two updated item ledger entries uh, and one updated uh, item. So the only thing we would need to do at this point is to open the task scheduler or whatever scheduling tool you would like and have this run the uh, this command line. Now we have sync and if we go Let's, we should probably go here and then I will go and say customer select top thousand from customers and we got our customers here. Uh, and we could we could cheat and see customer 10 is Eric and if we go back into wow oh, that's lucky customer 10 is Eric. Let me add Hogarth to that one. Close out. I run this thing again. And we go back in here and I say, uh, I think there's a way to refresh this, but to be honest, sure. let me just run this one again. And now it says Eric Hogart here. So that's how you can uh, replicate data from from Business Central to a SQL Server uh, and and set up how you would like it just using PCCL and it's pretty fast and uh, it's very flexible. So you can if there's certain fields that you 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 don't want to uh, to move along, you can you know, remove the field uh, and stuff like that. So so it's it's all in your control. Um, you can try BCCL, install uh, the the app from App Source in a sandbox, and uh, try it out. It will only allow to to do. Uh, you have to try it out with small tables, uh, but other than that, you can give it a go. And if you want, let me know in the comments below or contact. Use the links uh, we have. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.